This may well be the most important video to watch when it comes to earning gold in Guild Wars 2. If you can understand how gold works and what fuels wealth and account value in the game, then you have the ultimate knowledge required to obtain pretty much whatever you want. Guild Wars 2 is unusual when it comes to how you actually get gold. In other similar titles, you'll get loads of gold directly from quests, looting enemies, completing dungeons, and selling junk items to vendors. This doesn't always happen that much in Guild Wars 2, and one of the most common questions I always get is, why am I not getting gold in this game? I've been farming for hours and I've only gained 5 gold. This is a very understandable concern, considering a lot of items will cost hundreds of gold or even thousands for the extreme legendary items. Fear not though, this seeming absence of wealth is an illusion. The game just throws income at you in slightly different ways. All of the rewards in the game essentially boil down to either things that you can sell to players, use to craft stuff yourself, or currencies that you can use to either buy items to sell to other players, or use yourself. The key to getting rich in Guild Wars 2 is understanding how to utilize these items and currencies. The items are very straightforward. You can see how much items are worth by right clicking on an item and then clicking sell on trading post. Make sure to mouse over the price to see the estimated profit. The greedy trading post takes a 15% cut. Almost all the time, items are worth more to players than to vendors. Be sure to always check if you have something valuable. For example, a piece of green unidentified gear, a drop you'll be seeing a lot of, sells for 1 silver 37 copper to a vendor, but to another player, you can sell it for 1 silver 96 copper after taxes. That's 40% more value. Additionally, crafting materials that you get will probably end up in a section of your bank called material storage. If, like everyone else, you habitually deposit them using the deposit materials button in your inventory, it can be very easy to forget about this and just let everything pile up, but you could well be sitting on a mountain of gold without knowing it. Keep tabs on your material storage and get familiar with what materials are commonly used by players. Great examples of these are mystic coins, globs of ectoplasm, and tiered crafting materials such as blood, bones, totems, and so on. If you want to get a very easy overview of what's valuable in your account, then Guild Wars 2 Efficiency is absolutely essential. It's a website that allows you to track everything going on in your account, including seeing the value of your bank, material storage, and everything you're carrying around on all characters. It also has a very handy farming tracker, which records all items you receive over time and tells you how much gold you've earned. There is an absolutely huge amount of data that the site can show you, but don't worry, it's all very self-explanatory, and a lot of it is related to account unlocks and progression. It has a massive amount of utility when it comes to understanding how to make items, tracking your progress, and of course, flexing on players with your top 0.1% account value. It's such a powerful tool that it frankly requires a video of its own. For now though, the sections that are all about tracking gold are in the account section. Overview is exactly that, showing you an overview of all your wealth across all different characters and storage. Bank will show you everything in your bank, highlighted with values. Material storage will break down what all your materials are worth, and the farming tracker tracks farming. All you need to do to get started is to make an API key from your ArenaNet account page and sign up. You'll be surprised how much you're worth, so get in there right now. Moving on then to currencies. Currencies are very similar to materials, but more specific. They can often be used to purchase materials in some way, essentially being converted into gold, or they can be used to save gold. That is, you can use them to spend less gold when obtaining certain items. For example, crafting a best-in-slot ascended quality sword will cost you around 25 gold. But if you buy the same sword using magnetite shards, a currency gained from raids, it'll cost you 15 gold, and 250 magnetite shards. The shards have replaced 10 gold here, and in this transaction have a value of about 4 silver each. This type of gold saving by using currencies is present in every area of the game, and can be pretty confusing starting out because of just how many currencies there are. To find out what each one does, I would highly recommend using the forward slash wiki command in the game. This will open a web page to the official Guild Wars 2 wiki, which will contain information about the currency, how to get it, and everything you can do with it. 
In general, where you see a currency for an item's price, you are probably getting a discount. There are a few exceptions to this amusingly, but they are very rare. To make things perfectly complicated, sometimes you'll be buying containers that contain a random amount of other items with currencies, making it quite difficult to determine if an item is a good deal or not. Thankfully, the community has done a lot of drop rate research and spreadsheet gaming, so you can go to fast.farming-community.eu to see exactly how to get the most gold out of your currencies. Some methods shown are a bit convoluted, especially for karma. So make sure that you read the method carefully before you go all in, otherwise you might find yourself saddled with hours of work or items that will take a long time to sell to other players to get the payoff. The two ideas of currencies and materials combine into the most important insight in the economy of Guild Wars 2. Gold is not actually as important as you might think. Items and currencies are often far more powerful if you know how to use them, especially as if you really need gold to make a purchase then you can easily liquidate. To put this in perspective, my guild runs a daily open world boss farm that nets about 80 gold. Of that 80, Approximately 69 or 85% comes from selling items or materials on the trading post and using currencies. Always try to spend currencies and materials before you start selling them for gold to buy stuff. You might end up selling an item only to buy it back in another form. Planning out what you need to make the items you want is pretty important, otherwise that 15% trading post tax is going to be haunting your financial dreams. This idea of using what you find instead of buying everything with liquid gold leads nicely onto the idea of account bound wealth. Many items you'll find will not be sellable to other players, but but they can be some of the most valuable drops you'll find. For example, completing most reward tracks in player vs player or world vs world gives you two mystic clovers. And while you can't sell them, they are required to make all legendary items, which is a very common endgame goal. Crafting mystic clovers is quite expensive, they'll set you back nearly 7 gold on average, so that's almost 14 gold in addition to the other loot obtained during the reward track. Of course, if you don't care about legendary items, then they are not much use, but that's only one example of account wealth increasing. Another one would be just dropping ascended gear. Lots of endgame activities such as fractals, raids, and open world can just drop best in slot items randomly and quite frequently too. Whenever you see an item like this, there is a very high chance you can make use of it, unless you have all of your characters fully geared. Dropping an item like this means you don't have to buy that item in the future. In other words, you've just effectively dropped around 20 to 30 gold because you don't have to purchase an item. It's very similar to the idea of how currencies work, except with account bound drops you can't sell them to other players. You have to make use of them yourself. Fortunately, by the time that you no longer have any need for such items, you are probably rich anyway. And that's it, those are the core concepts on how the Guild Wars 2 economy works and how wealth is generated. It might sound crazy, but after you have learned these details about Guild Wars 2, you will be able to understand how to get huge value out of doing pretty much any content in the game and work towards your goals. If you are in the future, check out the other videos in this series. There will be one going over the sources of income for every game mode, alongside more explanations on how to get that fat loot that you desire. Thanks for watching. Subscribe, like, spam the comments with questions or memes, come and bother me live on Twitch, and I'll see you next time.